Hey guys, how's it going? Michael Troy here, and today we're looking at The Flash Annual Number no. 5 from 1992, written by Mark Wade with art by uh, Travis Chere. All right, so here we go. And I made double sure to pronounce Travis Chere's name correctly. Um, it's French, and I was saying Charest in the last video I did on him, so forgive me, Travis. Anyway. So this is early work from Travis Chere. Uh, he's working at DC Comics and he's uh, coming in as very much a Jim Lee clone. And But that's what made everybody fall in love with his work initially. He did evolve to like an appoint, a point to become, you know, basically his own artist and everything. But uh, I think I think that's how how people who do emulate other artists get into the industry because, you know, they have a style that people want to see. And I love clones. I mean, I'll take them, you know, because eventually or whatever, they just grow into their own and become their own person. So whatever. So the story is by Mark Wade and Craig Boldman with pencils by Travis Chere and uh, inks by Dan Davis with Scott Hanna and John Lowe. Um, so the art is super cool, and this is very early Travis Chere. Um, uh, he became so big and so popular, and he's like one of those artists that, uh, the fan, he's just a huge fan favorite, but he's also an artist's artist. You know, he ha has the respect of, um, you know, all of his peers, and I feel like he really, um, just killed it on Wildcats, written by... Alan Moore, and that's when he kind of just got so good. And uh, but I've always loved his work. I I feel like one of his early times that I've seen his work was uh, he did the wraparound cover for a, a failed relaunch of The Outsiders. So many times they've launched and failed him, but I love Batman and The Outsiders. They'll always hold a special place in my heart. And uh, so this is back when Mark Wade was writing The Flash and. You can see it's an Eclipso crossover. I think that was a good idea um, to do like a company-wide event and, you know, have it cross through all their annuals. That way it's not crossing through the monthly books and you don't have to get it if you don't want to. You don't have to uh, get all the books or whatever. You're just fine to continue with your monthly and get on with the rest of your life. But but if you want, here it is. I mean, if Travis Chere is drawing it, I'm picking it up. I mean, there was just something about, you know, there, there's like certain artists who just like break onto the scene and just immediately have whatever it takes. And he's just so good. And I love his art. He works pretty much digitally now and his style's a little controversial because it looks very different. But it's funny if you look at different um, benchmarks in his career. You know, it's like right here, he, uh, you know, looks very much like a, a Jim Lee clone. And it's funny because usually when it's a clone, like it's a poor man's version. But I definitely would not call this a poor man's version. Like it's, you know, it totally stands on its own. Like you wouldn't feel gypped by just getting this art and not getting Jim Lee instead because it just is so appealing. I just really love this art, in case you didn't notice. But yeah, I mean, you can definitely see the Jim Lee influence and um, Jim Lee influenced, you know, a ton of artists. And uh, it's funny when the image guys left to or the Marvel guys left to form Image Comics, they started their own books and it's like they adopted their own sort of house styles, which was, I thought, kind of weird because it was sort of like just following Marvel's suit. But, you know, Jim Lee hired people who drew like him and Mark Silvestri hired people who like drew like him and Rob Liefeld hired people who drew like him. And, you know, but they discovered a lot of great artists who eventually you know, burst out onto their own. And um, in their defense, their art was so good and largely popular that a lot of artists were influenced by them. So, like attracts like, I guess. But, um, 
Yeah, it's fun to see uh, interiors by an artist who's normally not doing a ton of interiors. And he sort of disappeared. I know he disappeared for a while to do, uh, I want to say, a European graphic novel. Was it uh, Metahumans or something like that? And um, I don't know. I don't know. A lot of, a lot of uh, you know, comic book artists, it doesn't, I mean, unless you're hugely dedicated to it, and just like uh, a beast and just can crank out monthly, like, monthly comics like nobody's business. You know, it, it it's a difficult, difficult life and it doesn't pay a ton of money unless you're, I don't know, getting movie residuals or something like that. But a lot of uh, comic artists, you know, after their big heyday or whatever, go off and do, I don't know, design video games and toys or commercial art or storyboarding is a big thing. So, you know, since basically comic books are very similar to movie storyboards, you have to be able to tell a story in either medium, right? I like Eclipse, so I thought this was a fun crossover. I think he's a cool villain. That would be cool to see him on the big screen against the JL or the Justice League, right? There's a very, very cool shot of Flash there. I mean, doesn't this make you love his art? Anyway, so good. Early work by Travis Sherry, who would go on to uh, uh, Wildcats. And this is some of his fun early work. Very much a Jim Lee clone. And, uh, Please subscribe to my channel, hit like and subscribe and share, and I'll bring you some more content later. All right, thanks guys.